I think than um, anybody I can put a name to to promote our sport. The archer who owns all the world records, John Demmer the third. You know, the more difficult a thing is, the more important the mental game becomes. I, I didn't eat any supper yet either. How about you guys? It. You guys eat yet? I didn't eat. Oh, it. you know, uh, I got some crunch berries. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Grayson Parlo. It's like me taking three or four years off your eyes just because I weakened that prescription in the shooting eye. And don't put everything into my shot that I should, that I get a lot of drop on those heavy arrows. He's dropping all the way down into the six. And he said, well, you might want to think about going to a lighter arrow and string walking. And then that's what got that started. So. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I mean, you you're 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 a good looking dude but i wouldn't i wouldn't go that far so talk to me tell me how uh iowa went uh pretty good um did real good the first day now they score the x as an extra point right and i shot a 292 13 x so if you take the 13 away 279 on blue face oh uh, yeah okay yeah not bad but a little low normally for me but um uh, and then sunday it was like i couldn't hold on the targets i was everywhere yeah i only shot three tens out of 30 arrows no x's and third place guy come up and he beat me by 10 the sunday but i had him by five so he beat me by five yeah. But Robbie that was shooting with me, him and I were tied at Saturday and he ended up taking fourth. He had a worse day than I did. Yeah, we talked I talked to Robbie. I'm coaching him now. So we're working working through some things, you know, and what's your what's your I mean, you've been around the game long enough. Um, what's your what do you notice about Robbie's shot? Do you, you got got an opinion on on what you see compared to what we've talked about right right yeah what do you see that that really stands out that maybe is hurting him a little bit I or i should say he, was hurting him he's made some significant changes you'll see next time you see him okay i was going to say really more of a mental game because we can practice and he is dead nuts yeah every shot but as soon as that whistle blows, I, I, so I think it's a mental. Yeah, it's part of it. It's definitely part of it. Um, but we're going to talk about that with you today, too. You know, right. we're going to talk about, you know, that confidence level and how do you how do you up your confidence level level preparing for a tournament, going to a tournament, you know, and um there's a refinement to the shot process that plays a role. There's a refinement to every ounce of your shot that plays a role. And, you know, I think when you have a, a level of simplicity to your shot process that it's so easy to repeat um, that it's, that it ultimately ends up giving you more confidence in the long run because you don't have to do anything crazy to make the shot work. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. You know, Robbie, when I shot against Robbie at the U S open, we went head to head and there's a, there's a photo and I know it haunts him a little bit because I told him, I was like, dude, like he, he, his follow through, he went, he was like this, you know, it was like this big, huge explosion. And I said, I was like, Robbie, I'm like, dude, what happened? And, you know, and we've talked about it and, and it's just, it's that natural reaction to when you get, when you're mentally not thinking in the right frame of mind, when you're not in that present moment, that present process thinking, when you're not doing that, and then you allow, whether you're in, you're, you're in your peripheral vision, aiming to, with the tip of the arrow too hard, like staring at the tip of the arrow in your peripheral vision, that'll, that's going to introduce target panic like that because what happens you don't people don't realize it but like you i i this is what i see often people stare at the tip of the arrow 
in their peripheral vision. They think they're looking at the target, but they're really concentrating on the tip of the arrow. And it goes up to their aim point and then boom, it stops. And they're like, oh, I can't move it. I can't move it. I can't because because they're not thinking about hold, hold, hold. They're thinking about, oh, I want I'm going to let go as soon as it get because it's going to get to the middle. I'm going to I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go. And then boom, it's like that arm doesn't want to lift. And that's target panic. It, it is. But right. you can it's it's not looking at the tip of the arrow and like deliberately avoiding looking at the tip of the arrow in some ways depending on where you're at and your training that plays a role. Like if you can say, so say Spanky, say you're at the classic and you're shooting your qualifications and, and you are, you know, you're shooting well. And then all of a sudden you're talking to somebody, you know, you, you see somebody down, Oh, I haven't seen so-and-so in so long. You're doing a thing, whatever. And then you go and shoot an arrow and it's a quick one. And, and you have to be able to say to yourself, well, why did I just shoot that quick one? What did I do different? Well, your mind wasn't on the hold because you were thinking about so-and-so that you haven't talked to in five years and they're 15 lanes down and you want to get over there and say hello. Right. Those are the moments that can make or break um, a qualification score, an elimination around, so on and so forth. You know, and I don't know, those are the, also the moments that you as, you as a shooter, it doesn't matter how long you've been shooting, you have to learn to identify when they happen so that you can pull yourself right back into that present process. Say, ah, I'll see them later. I need to focus on the task at hand and then go through your shot process again, draw yourself back in. More importantly, if you shoot that quick arrow and it's a sh shitty six or something, and you're like, ah, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, you can't be, oh my gosh, you have to be, ah, forget it. I'm putting the next one right in the middle. Then you're right back into the stance, hook, grip, position one. And you, and you, you just have the, you have to develop the innate ability, not only to identify where the mistake was, but then forget about the mistake and just worry about fixing it. Right. Yeah. And that's the hard part. That's, yeah. that's the hard part. And what I, what I have come to realize is that the reason a lot of times people struggle to fix it because they don't know what it is. They right. don't know what they okay. did. They just know the shot was quick. They don't know that in their peripheral, mm -hmm. they're, they're aiming at the, or they're looking at the tip of the arrow too much. They don't know that, or, or in Robbie's case, he's got that, had that big explosive follow through. Mm -hmm. it's because you you know that that explosiveness is coming so you get there it's so easy as soon as you just remotely get to outside of that holding concentration boom and you explode well you're already building tension into the explosion you already have tension built up anticipating the explosion happening right. so the goal is get rid of that that explosion you already had a, a very subtle not really explosive follow-through so that helped you for years right so yeah. you you were going in the right direction so let's talk about your men the mental side then like tell me where your struggles are tell me let and let's walk let's talk through it and see well what do we have to change what do we do we have to change or is it just a matter of you know it's the present process thing you know understanding okay i just need to shoot i will turn a positive a negative into a positive immediately i will shoot this next arrow as good as possible right. i say that statement myself to myself all the time but tell me talk to me right okay well you already mentioned a little bit i will catch myself i did this up in iowa and i realized it after i got back i was trying to place the arrow i was looking more at the arrow yeah. than I was where I wanted to hit. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't have nothing wild. I don't even think sure. I even shot a seven, sure. but I could not get in the yellow, but I was trying to place it um, too hard. Since I've been home, I don't know, I was shooting, I thought, well, shit, I didn't even really look like my point was there, but I drilled the X, you know, mm -hmm. I thought, Okay, that's what I was doing. That's why I couldn't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's funny. So 
I think a lot of it's there um, now. Also, what you mentioned about seeing somebody, I have always, I don't even really see the person beside me yeah. when I'm at um, That's like when I got on the podium, uh, Dwayne Martin called me and he goes, oh man, he goes, did the lights and the audience get you? I go, Dwayne, I never seen them. I never seen the lights. I never, good. there was only one person in that, that I could see. And I used him as a coach because I was watching him uh, mm -hmm. after I would shoot. He, he would do like thumbs up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he kind of helped me out. Um, nice. But Who would that be? Lee Collins. Okay. All right. Yeah, he, he just stood out. He's, he's yeah. a bigger fella, and he's, he stands mm -hmm. out a little bit. That's good. Uh, but And I told him that just here a month ago. I said, you didn't know this. <laughs> I was using you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, awesome. Uh, so mental-wise, I don't know. I do know my scores drop from practice to a tournament. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably... You know, the excitement, the butterflies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and now with, with your help of, of some of this, I did some before, but it seems like it's more now. I'll know instantly what I did wrong. Good. You know, as soon as I shoot. Um, now, on a bad arrow, I'll stand there and shake my head, and I probably shouldn't, you know. Yeah. But yeah. as soon as I do that, then I'm done with it, you know. Um, That's good. I mean, I, I truly, Spanky, I truly believe that there is power in positive words. So even if it sounds weird, and I, I caught myself doing this at Nationals this year because I didn't do it enough during qualifications, but I was damn sure not going to – not during, during eliminations. Like I was on my game and, and there's, like I said, there's power and positive words. You need to turn even shaking your head. Well, you're shaking your head. It's a negative gesture. You're shaking your head in, in discouragement of yourself. Right. If you, you're not, then as soon as you do that, you're not going into the next arrow in a positive light at all. You're not going in with confidence. You've set the tone. Whether you realize it or not, you're, you're, that's a, you're, you're going in to the next arrow with a negative connotation right away. Because the last thing that you were thinking about was, oh, I can't believe I just did that. Right. Yeah. In the past. Thinking in the past. Can't think in the past. What's, forget the past. Think, right. Think right now. Right now. And then not, not going into, you have to replace a negative habit with something positive, whether it's shooting form, whether it's um, life in general, whether it's um, the mental side of archery. If you have a negative thought, you need to immediately place it with a positive one and not say like, oh, well, I'll try to shoot this one better. No, no, I will. I will. I will shoot this one better. It's literally... Jay Bars, I did a couple podcasts with him. I don't think I ever did one on the Barebow Project. I did it on my other podcast, but on the, the Archery Coach cast. But he he told me straight out, he's like, fake it till you make it. You literally, if you got to lie to yourself that the next arrow is going to be perfect, you, it is what it is. You need to literally tell yourself, I don't care. This next arrow is going to be right in the middle. And this is exactly what I need to do. I need to follow my process. And, okay. and he, and just to give you, give you some insight into that conversation. Um, and I'll, I'll put it up when I do this, when I make this a podcast, I will put it in the show notes because it's a really good conversation. And Jay, you know, he, he shot his uh, final gold medal match, individual gold medal match, Olympic round arrows, thousands and thousands and thousands of times in his brain for like an entire year he goes into discussion about and i talked i think dick tone was in the who was his coach at the time was in that podcast also and and jay's mom would call dick his coach and be like i can't stand this kid 
he's driving me up a wall because he was so in tune to, I'm going to win this gold medal. I'm going to win this gold medal. There is absolutely nothing going to stop me. I'm going to shoot all the preparation arrows I need to for training. I'm going to do everything I possibly need to do because I'm going to win this gold medal. That's literally what his entire year of existence was going into the Olympics. So even for you, or I mean, and really it is for me too, even though I coach, if I really wanted to win the Lancaster Archery Classic, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to do everything possible for me. It means stop coaching because (laughs) there's no way that I can, I can continue. I can't continue that pace for you. It, it might be get coaching and try to organize your brain throughout the entire preparation from the months before until the day, the the final arrows and the last two people standing in the shoot ups. And that's okay. That's, that's what, if that's what you need to do, then that's what you need to do. And for you to go into the classic this year, for example, same with Robbie um, or anybody else I'm working with, you all know who you are. You need to go into it. Like, I know I have done exactly what I need to do. I have the skills. I have the ability. I am going to shoot these arrows as good as I can every time. And I don't give a shit what happens anywhere by anyone, with anyone, who I see, what's going on, nothing else. I have one job and one job only, and that's the job I'm going to do. And and the hard part is you shoot in your, is it like a garage, I think, or something? It's a shop. Yeah, a little little building. So it's hard to keep that mentality shooting in your shop. It's tough. You could fall into the subconscious so easily in the shop because it's in a controlled environment. It's an environment you're familiar with. It's an environment you're comfortable with. So you can just bang, 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 and have like, you just, you're, you, but you have to, you have to kind of reach down inside and you have to pretend that you're in that moment and that you are, you have to, you almost, like I said, fake it till you make it. You have to develop that feeling or that environment that you know i can handle this because i'm ready and and that's that's what it is like it's it's so you know so i'm going to share with you and when i do my seminars i share this document and i call it the building blocks of the mental game and it's really it's the mental game discussion on in my seminars and you know this varies for everyone It, it these these blocks aren't necessarily the same but just like the foundation of a house, you know, in this situation, all of these, these stone blocks are different sizes in your shop process, in your archery game, all of these are going to be different sizes. And these are just general um, um, topics on each one. It can change intermittently all the time. They're never the same. And if you, you know, the reason that the podium is at the top and then your tournament success at tournaments is next. And then everything else falls in between on the bottom. And it, it starts with, like, look at the bottom here. You see stance, grip, bow hand, your head position. Mm-hmm. Oh, what t- I put today here. What did you do today? Did, did you get sleep? Did you eat food? Did you bring water? Or are you dehydrated? Are you well nourished? Are you well rested? Like, there's everything goes into the mental game as far as your preparation for be, before, during, and even really after a tournament, you know, did you shoot qualification and come out number one qualifier, but tie a load on last night and then go into the next day thinking that you're going to be at the top of your game. Uh, maybe <laughs> some people can pull it off. I know I can't, but um, you know, and here's that positive self-talk, right? Positive mm-hmm. self-talk. You, have to constantly replace any negative um, reflection with a positive one every single time. Um, and then there's even a blank block here. And this blank block can, that can be occupied by anything at any given time. If you, you know, for some reason, um, you know, let's say your, your string alignment, you're not watching your string alignment or it's off or you're doing something different, then maybe string alignment gets moved to the top of the foundation. And that's one of those things that you really, for, for whatever reason right now, you're focusing on that one thing. That one thing is really keeping you where you need to be. Then that occupies that block for the day. Okay. 
So like, I need you, I want you to take that approach. You know, what is your foundation of your mental game look like? What are those things that, you know, all right, this block is secured. It's perfect. It's exactly where it needs to be. I'm really good with it. You know, this one I need to work on. And then when you go through your shot process and you go through like, you know, my release gets a little hairy once in a while and I'm doing this. Well, then what do you need to do? You need to shoot blind bail and you need to perfect that release. You need to, my bow arms flying all over the place. Well, then maybe you need to do some draw holds and, 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 or do that best drill that I, that I did the video on to train both of them, that that bow arm doesn't move, that that release is nice and repeatable, boom, whatever. And you're, you're, you're constantly, you're not moving and shifting the blocks, but you're, you're, you're finding a place for them and then focusing, using them to the best of their ability. The blocks on the bottom might be the ones that you know are your concrete. You are good. You don't have to worry about those. You know, you're going to do them right. And you're going to do them right. You know, 99.9% .9 of the time, maybe even a hundred. And then you slowly build on that platform. And it, I put training in here because a lot of people like, you're not going to, for training purposes, you're not going to just, willy nilly shoot a bunch of arrows and then think you're going to go to the classic and win right you gotta you gotta you, your tuning has to be right your shot process has to be solid everything has to be has to be gelling together at the same time at the right moment and that's where training comes in you leave no rock unturned you you 150 percent go in with utmost confidence that i got this so you know I think that's the thing, like, as we approach your, um, your last couple of weeks here before we get to the classic and, you know, I, I want you to start looking at, and we can talk about it back and forth on private messenger. What are those things that you're going to work on for these next two weeks? You know, if you feel like you're shooting really, really well, then what are the things that are your weaknesses that you want to reinforce? Do you know what I mean? And then take that approach. If it's the release, we know what we're doing. If it's the bow arm, we know what we're doing. If it's, you know, um, you just need more reps. We know what we're doing. We're going to what? Do more drills. We're going to do a 30X drill. And you're going to do it from, from three, go start all over again and go back to three meters and then go to five and then go to 10, seven and then 10 and then go and make, like, make it hard on yourself. Deliberately make it hard on yourself because when you get up there, you'll have so much confidence, it's going to be through the roof. And you're not going to, you're not going to have room or space to let any of those empty thoughts that sip into your head and, and then make you go down that negative rabbit hole. You're not going to have those. There's okay. no room for them. Your mind's occupied. Conscious mind has everything covered until that holding is done and the tip of the arrow is floating in the middle. And you let that subconscious to step in and just go boop. And that's it. Arrow goes in the middle, boom, you're on the podium. You know what I mean? Yep. Does that help? Yes, it, it does. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm still working on getting my fingers to relax. It's getting better. Yeah. But I was, well, I was shooting this morning, and I shot one, and I thought, why'd you help it? You know, uh, I mean, I felt it just... <laughs> So, yeah, it, I know a lot of mine, and, and I could be wrong, but to me, the majority of my problem is my release. Mm -hmm. Because for so many years, I have flipped my fingers open. Yeah. You know? yeah. And yeah. it wants to go back there real fast, real easy. So. <clears throat> Just keep training um, it. Keep training it. Train, train, train. Oh, yeah. You know, that, and it's that that and keeping the hook. It's like you're pretending that you absolutely refuse to let go. And when that, when you allow, you know, you consciously um, finish that aim and, and continue that hold and that string just pulls through, it just blows right through it so fast. And it happens so fast. Like you don't even, you don't even know. And you sort of, in some ways, immediately go back to the conscious mind and you're like, you know, it's, it blows through and you're like, hold, you're continuing to hold through the end of the shot. 
you're maintaining with that barrel of the gun through the end of the shot, just mm-hmm. staying in that alignment position. Boom. Keep let until that arrow hits the target. A little bit of reflection. What do I got to improve? Move on. You know, and then you know what you need to do then to work on that release. We've talked about that pretty extensively. So, you know, and it's not, you know, it's not going to come like that. It may, it may, but you know, the other thing that you need to think about too is, is how, you know, how do you prepare now? You're two weeks out, you know, you should start slowly dialing back the amount of shooting that you're doing, but it's tough. And there, this is where the, the juggling part comes in. Well, you're working on your release and you got to dial back a little bit, try to start letting yourself recover from 200 arrows a day or whatever it is that you shoot. <laughs> and so, so you have to concentrate, well, where are you going to put your volume? Where are you going to implement the volume of arrows? Are you going to implement it here? Or are you just going to shoot for score and hope that it gets better? Right. Put it here. Focus on that thing. Focus on that movement. That's how you get better by making that particular part, that item in your shot process, that's the kink in the armor, making it better. And then, you know, and it it could, you have to understand that this stuff takes time. It's not something that you just, boom, it's all of a sudden the, it's, I, you know, you wave the magic wand and you're, you know, whatever, a champion, it doesn't work that way, but you know, you have to go in things with a plan and it's a plan that includes everything, not just, you know, it's not just, um, I just, I always say, and, and they say that in the, in the NTS too, you know, I think any, any logical explanation would be the mental game includes the physical and the mental, you have to maximize the physical and implement the mental with it. You can't have one without the other, right? You want to have total shot control, If you want to have that, you know, that full on absolute undeniable, unbreakable ability to shoot the arrows in the middle, you got to kind of have it all, whatever, whatever that journey is to get there, then that's what you do, you know, and that's what we're trying to do for you and, and Robbie and, you know, a few other people that I'm working with right now. Um, And hopefully, you know, this and people seeing you go through this journey i hope it helps them you know i hope right. they see like hey spanky brooks has the same problems that i have you know you know and so do i and everybody else in some regard just it's those who have those problems less often are the ones who end up at the top so right, right. okay yep all right boss yep sounds good all right perfect i gotta um i gotta step out and and uh go take care of some family stuff and then i gotta be at my shop in a half hour so okay yeah, i gotta I'm go getting, coach i'm getting ready to head to kansas city i'm shooting a uh double 460 tomorrow and sa- sunday all right well good luck keep so, me posted how it goes oh yeah so um d- yeah it uh like i said i i Stopped a little early today shooting because I've got four targets set up mm. on my bail and I shoot three of each and yep. I shot uh, 29, 29, 30 and a 30. And I thought, hmm, that's a good place. Walk to away. Yep. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, that's funny. All right. Well, you know, kick some butt this weekend. Concentrate okay. what you got to concentrate on. And hopefully we, uh, Hopefully you come out at the end of it with, with some good news. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Spanky. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, buddy. See ya. You bet. Thank Bye. you.